Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 10.2, Lines Tangent to a Circle. So uh, for today's lesson, our essential question is, uh, how is a tangent line related to the radius of a circle at the point of tangency? Our learning goal today is to be able to use properties of tangent lines to solve problems. We're going to also be constructing tangent lines, so we're going to show you how to do that as well. So our vocab, we need, which is part of the essential question, is what is a tangent and uh, what is the point of tangency? So let's describe what a tangent is. A tangent to a circle is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. Very simple on concept here. Now the point where it crosses is called the point of tangency. And you can see that the tangent line here, L, is the, uh, the, is the, the actual tangent to the circle P. And as we mentioned earlier, the point of tangency is point A, which is where the tangent line intersects the circle. And uh, so there's an important relationship between the radius of a circle and the tangent line. So we'll go ahead and draw the radius of the circle here. Now the radius is the shortest distance to the tangent line. So you can easily um, get to the tangent line from, from P to A by taking the radius route. You can also take these, this route here, but that's the longer route, right? Any other route from P to line L would be longer than the radius. So it turns out that the radius is actually perpendicular to the tangent line um, at every single point of tangency for, you know, for every tangent line that you would draw for a circle. So no matter which tangent line you have, the radius of the circle is going to be perpendicular to the tangent line. And this is theorem 10-1, which we'll describe now. So here's the, uh, the theorem. states that if AB is a tangent to the circle C, at the point of tangency P here, then at the point of tangency it has to be perpendicular. Okay, The reverse of that is that if it is perpendicular, then that means that AB must be a tangent. It has to be a tangent at C, to circle C. That is if you start out knowing that that's a 90 degree angle. Alright, so using we're going to be using the converse of theorem 10-1 here. We want to determine if KJ is a tangent to the circle. Well, if it's a tangent to a circle, then that means, or rather, if we want to determine if it's a tangent to a circle, this must mean we have to prove that this is a 90 degree angle. If we can prove that this is 90 degrees, or perpendicular here, then we can prove that this is a tangent. How do we prove that? Well, we prove that using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that the converse of the Pythagorean theorem states that if a squared plus b squared equals c squared for a triangle, then that triangle must be a right triangle. So right now, this is a question mark until I figure out whether it's a right angle or not. So we're going to be applying the converse um, here. Now we know that this side is 10 because it's, uh, it's 4 plus the radius of 6. And then we have the radius 6 here. So we're going to call this c. C is always the longest side in any triangle. And then we have um, A and B. I usually label A and B in order from least to greatest. It doesn't really matter, but uh, I usually order it and put it in that order. I try to. So A, B, and C. So we have here A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If that's true, then it's a right angle there. So we got 6 squared plus 9 squared equals 10 squared. Well, question mark, because we don't know. Well, 6 squared is 36. 9 times 9 is 81. 10 squared is 100. We add these together. You're not going to get 100, actually. This is not true. You're going to get uh, something greater than 100. You're going to get uh, 117. So that's not equal to 100, which means it's not a right triangle. And if it's not a right triangle, then that means we can't use theorem, the converse of theorem 10-1. So that means that KJ, line segment KJ, is not a tangent. Even though it looks like one, it's actually not a tangent. This may not be drawn to scale, so it's possible that this here uh, actually does cross a circle at more than one point. It's possible. Um, and so to determine this with certainty, this is why we use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. 
All right, so example two, determine the radius of the circle. Now this time we know that this is a right angle because it's given in the diagram. So we can just use regular old Pythagorean theorem to figure out the radius. The radius here is x, so we have here, we'll call this a. The longest side here is always opposite of the right angle, okay? So that means this has to be the longest side. This is c, and c is x plus 18 because we don't know what the radius is. So it's just 18 plus the radius, and then we'll call this b. So using the regular Pythagorean theorem, because we know that this is a right triangle, we know that this is going to work. So x squared plus b squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is all of this. All right, so this is going to be an interesting problem because we have some squares here. Um, we have to square this, so we have to foil this. So we have here x squared plus 24 squared, 24 times 24, uh, should be about 596, but I will double check that, we'll put that in the calculator. We got 576 uh, for the, the um, 24 squared. And then to foil to do this, uh, we have to actually foil it. So we have x plus 18 times x plus 18. And so this is squared because there's two of them. So now we're going to foil that. So if we foil that, we get x times x is x squared. x times 18 is 18x. We have another x times 18 here, which is 18x. And we have 18 times 18, so that's 18 squared, which is 324. So let's bring this down. We have x squared plus 576 equals all of that mess. But notice that the x squareds cancel. So this actually makes this a lot um, more manageable. We can combine these. So we have 576 equals 36x plus 324. We're solving for x here, so we're going to get rid of the 324, subtract that over. So that gives us here 252 equals 36x, and finally we'll divide by 36 to solve for the radius, which is x here. So 252 divided by 36 is 7. So the radius, so x equals 7, which is the radius. All right, so that was an interesting problem uh, in using some foiling and a little bit of algebra. Now this one is this type of problem. We have two tangent lines, and it uh, doesn't really matter how many tangent lines you have, but the purpose is, you know, we have this tangent here, this tangent here. They meeting at, they're meeting at some kind of point and making an angle, which we call x. So let's go ahead and find x here. Notice that you're making a quadrilateral here. You have a four-sided shape. So we're going to take advantage of that. Let's also take advantage of the fact that this is a tangent here, and therefore, and this is a radius, and therefore the radius and the tangent line must be perpendicular there. This radius and this tangent line must be perpendicular by theorem 10-1. So these are 90 degree angles. So if I wanted to add up the angles in a quadrilateral, I need to employ the polygon angle sum theorem. Now if you recall the polygon angle sum theorem, we'll draw right here, this is uh, I believe we've done this um, in we've done this in a uh, couple of chapters ago at least. But the polygon angle sum theorem states that if you have any polygon that um, these if you add up the interior angles in the polygon, then the interior angles add up to the number of sides minus two times 180. So for a triangle polygon. 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 times 180 is 180. So the triangle sum is 180. If you have a quadrilateral like a square, or for example this shape here, uh, then which this shape happens to be a kite here, then, or it looks like a kite, then you have, you're going to plug in 4 here. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times 180 is 360. So there you go. So this adds up to 360. So let's go ahead and uh, add up the angles. We have x plus 90 plus 135 
plus 90 is equal to this polygon angle sum here, which is 4 minus 2, because you got four sides here, times 180. All right, so we'll add this together. We have x plus 90, and 90 is 180. And you got 180 plus 315. It's going to be 315. It's equal to, this is going to be 360. So now we'll subtract 315 on both sides and giving us x, which is 45 degrees. All right, and that's how you deal with problems like this, taking advantage of this perpendicular property. All right, so let's discuss the next and last theorem for the lesson, which is the segments tangent to a circle theorem. So the, uh, the segments tangent to a circle states that if you have two tangents, which looks similar to what we did earlier, the previous problem where we had two tangents, and the two tangents meet at a point, right, the singular point, then those two tangents are actually congruent. They're the same length. So the same length from A to B as it is from A to C. That's what this states. Pretty simple theorem. So let's do the perimeter of A, B, C, D using this knowledge. We have two tangents here meeting at a point A, and therefore they must be congruent. So if this is 7, then this is 7. Same thing here. These must be congruent. So that's 2, this is 2. Same thing here, those are congruent, that's three, this is three. This is four, so that, or that is six, so this is also six, and that's using the theorem. Then we can find the perimeter by adding up all the sides. We know that this side is 13, this side is nine, this side is five, and this side is nine. So let's find the perimeter by adding up each of those sides. We have 13 plus 9 plus 5 plus 9 for this four-sided uh, shape here, uh, which this four-sided shape actually, in this case, if these are parallel, A, A D, and B, C, it looks like a, a trapezoid, assuming that those are parallel. Uh, so we have here 9 and 9 is 18. 18 plus 5 is 23. 23 plus 13 is uh, 36. So our perimeter is 36. All right, so now we're going to de uh, demonstrate uh, constructing tangents to a circle. So here are some of the steps, and then uh, once I show you the steps, we'll go ahead and show you an animation where I construct the tangent to the circle. So step one is use a straight edge to draw a line from the center P to some point past the circle at the point of tangency. Step two, you're going to place the compass point on the point of tangency A and then draw some arcs on the line that you did in step one. We're going to label the points where the arc crosses the line B and C. Step three, you're going to place the compass on point B, the, new, the newly created point that you made from step two. You're going to widen the compass to the point of tangency A so that it's a little bit past A. Once you widen it so it's a little bit past A from B, you're going to draw an arc above A, then you repeat this for C. For step four, you're going to use a straight edge, such as a ruler or some other tool, to draw a line from where the arcs across to the point of tangent C A, and then erase the details to reveal the tangent line and the circle. So we'll show you this in the animation. So here's a step, um, we're going to do step one, where we have the straight edge, um, from point P to some point on the circle. And I'm going to do this point diagonally right there. So there's my step one. I'm going to label the point of tangency A. All right, so step two, we're going to place the compass on A and then draw an arc on either side of A. We're going to label the points where the arc crosses the line, B and C. Step three, place the compass on B, widen it past A, and then draw an arc above A. So repeat that for C, keeping the setting the same. Step four, use a straight edge to draw a line from where the arcs cross to the point of tangency A. Erase the details. All right, and there is my tangent line. All right, so let's, just, let's talk about how to construct a tangent to a circle that crosses a point on the outside. So, um, 
So step one, use a straight edge to draw PT, so some kind of line from the center to some point T on the outside of the circle. Label point A where PT intersects the circle. Uh, and then next you want to uh, use a compass to make a circle with center P and passing through T. So you're going to be making another entire circle from your compass. Construct a perpendicular to PT at A. Label point B where the perpendicular intersects the outer circle. Step three, use a straight edge to construct BP. And a label where it intersects the circle, we'll call it point C. Step four, the last step, use a straight edge to construct TC. Erase the details. So we'll go ahead and show you this in the animation. So the difference between what we're doing here and what we did last in the last animation is that we're trying to construct a tangent to a circle that crosses a point on the outside. So this tangent line must cross T. So therefore, when you do your straight line for step one, you must draw a line from P to T. So step one, use your straight edge to draw a line from P to T. Line segment here, label your point A where it crosses. Step two, use a compass to construct a circle from P to T. There's my circle. Then you're going to construct a perpendicular to point A. Step three, you're going to construct BP just with a straight edge. Label that point C where it crosses. And step four, you're going to construct TC, connecting T and C together. Erase all the other details. And with magic, um, you can lightly erase your details and then come up with your final tangent line that crosses through T. All right, that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found this informative. You learned a few things. As usual, I'll see you in the next one.